Okay, we welcome now Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 National Guard Chevrolet. Dale, welcome back to Daytona 2014 season. Talk to us a little bit about your thoughts coming into a new season and what it feels like to be back at Daytona. Yeah, I wish, uh, you know, the weather would straighten out so we could get out on the track, but um, otherwise we're just kind of hanging out. Um, I think, uh, you know, been in the shop a little bit this off season. Looks like, uh, you know, everybody's geared up to get going and get out of the shop and get back to the racetrack and uh, do some testing and just get back into the groove and get back in the car and, and get back with your guys and, and, and working on uh, trying to improve what you're doing. So uh, there's still a little bit of off season left, and we're definitely going to make the most out of January, as we always do, uh, before we have to really get to work. But everybody's uh, seems to be pretty excited about uh, getting the year going. Okay, we'll go ahead and t open it up for questions. We'll start up front here with Lee, then go to the back to Bob and Jeff. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. There's, you know, obviously with Steve just leaving, can you talk about your thoughts and, um, you know, how long have you known and, um, you know, what you think about the situation? Yeah, it's definitely um, uh, a unique situation. And uh, he, he actually... Uh, included me in on the discussion uh, before the end of last year. And uh, I had a pretty good understanding whether he knew or not what he was going to do. I had a pretty good understanding what his decision was going to be as, when I left Homestead. Um, so I've had my, you know, have time to really wrap my brain around it. And it was hard because we are such, uh, uh, you know, we are such uh, good friends and, and I really do enjoy working with him, uh, you know, a lot. But uh, at the same time, I'm happy for him because uh, it gives him the opportunity to spend time with his family. It's something that's really important to him. And, uh, and the, you know, the way these races are broadcast and how they're presented to the fans is, is uh, a big part of how the sport remains healthy. And I think that he's going to be incredible in that role. I think that he'll... Uh, I think that he'll be really good. So I'm excited for him because I know he's uh, really um, looking forward to it. You can tell when he talks about it how you know genuinely uh, enthused he is about the opportunity. And at the same time, uh, you know, I'm not worried about this season uh, and how focused we may be. I know that he's gonna he's really good at separating. Uh, things and keeping things compartmentalized as, as Jeff Gordon likes to say about uh, Steve. So I know that uh, we're going to be fine as far as how we'll compete this year and how dedicated and how, um, uh, you know, how dedicated he'll be and how, how we might move through the, the, the process of the season. I think that, you know, I'm expecting, I expect us to do nothing less than improve on what we've been doing. Uh, and steadily uh, keep moving toward our our goals and and you know, but it's definitely going to be emotional and and difficult at times. Uh, you know, just because you you know we we really enjoy working together. So, but I'm excited about the year. I'm excited about our chances as a team. We got a great group of guys, and uh, Steve's a great crew chief. It's going to give us a good opportunity to to try to win some races. And I think that the team, uh, just uh, based on the personalities and, and, and how well uh, we all get along and mesh and how much fun we really had last year, I think that everybody can, uh, can buckle down and, and, and do their jobs, and, and I think we can do well. Okay, we'll take our next question in the back from Bob, and uh, then go Jeff, Allen, George, and Brent. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. What do you f fear – the most about losing Steve as a crew chief? In other words, kind of what are his, what are such his strengths that you're like, man, how are we going to do this without him? Yeah, I think the one thing that I fear is just trying to get a guy in there that that's it's equally as talented. And uh, I think, uh, you know, I'm not really, you know, Steve was a great cheerleader and, and definitely uh, built up my confidence and, and changed me as a race car driver and as a person. Uh, working with him's really helped me grow. I think you, you guys have all seen that over the last several years. And, 
I think I can carry that with me, what I've learned about myself and what I've learned about the job and what my job is and what my, de- you know, what my responsibility is to Steve and the crew chief. I think I can carry that with me. Hopefully I can at this age, uh, you know, it, I've learned, hopefully I've learned something and learned enough to, to be a, a, you know, do a better job for the next guy. Um, and I think that, you know, my fear is just, can we replace Steve? You know, this guy's gonna be hard to replace. Um, and it ain't, I don't, I'm not worried about the specific qualities that Steve has, but just what, you know, will we be able to get a guy in there of equal talent and, uh, and, you know, how well will we be able to, uh, you know, keep, you know, make that transition seamless, you know, it's going to be a real challenge to do that. And, uh, I guess that's uh, my uh, only concern. Okay. Our next question, Jeff, go ahead. Jeff Gluck from USA Today. Um, you mentioned that you've had several months now to wrap your head around this and kind of come to terms with it. But when he first sat you down, I guess maybe sometime last fall or something, it was like, hey, I'm you know, not even saying that he's going to do it, but that yeah. there's a possibility. I mean, was it like a, a gut punch to you? Were you taken <laughs> by surprise? Yeah. I mean, what was your initial reaction? I heard of, I, I think I heard about it in, at the Charlotte race. Uh, the second Charlotte race, and I asked him to come over to the bus. Um, I usually don't take my bus to Charlotte, but I had it there, and yeah, it was. A, I was, uh, I was in shock. I didn't know what was going on. I thought it might be uh, um, something. I didn't know, you know, what what exactly. Uh, you know, the rumors were kind of sketchy and and unclear, and I didn't know the specifics of what uh, he was thinking about doing. Um, just that he would even want to, you know, do anything different was, you know, just blew me away because we were all having such a good time and the team was moving forward and, and the trajectory was, was, was great for what we were trying to accomplish. We we're getting closer and closer to, to realizing our potential. And so, yeah, it was a huge shock at first. And, and, um, you know, the more, just for me personally, it was difficult and, uh, you know, the more I sat down with him and talked about it, the more it made sense and the more I understood his situation and, and, and you know, I could have put my own uh, selfishness aside and, and kind of understand what was important to him and what how this was good for him. So, um, you know, he's a, he's a good guy. He deserves these opportunities, and, and he's earned it. Okay, we'll go Alan, George, Brant, Dustin. Uh, Alan, come on and ask car.com at this stage in your career. How much input do you want to have on who your next crew chief is? Will, will you make suggestions? Will you, you know, have uh, say in the final decision? How will that work in your, I won't make any su- suggestions at all. Um, I will leave that up to, to Rick, um, Doug. I would, uh, love to have input from Chad Knauss and Steve. Um, I think that, um, Steve knows what makes this team work. Steve knows uh, how I can be successful um, and how the individuals within the team can be successful. I think he'd be a good guy to sort of sort of pick at, and I hope that, that Doug and, and Rick would include him in that conversation at times. I think it's important that, that Chad's got a lot of imp- influence because um, he, he knows how well the shop works together and how, what the culture is in the shop and how a guy, uh, a particular guy may mesh in that environment. Um, but I don't really want to have any influence on the choice. Uh, I want, uh, I think that those guys are the ones that can make the, the choice, uh, and have the most success with that decision. So I'll just kind of, um, you know, it was Rick and, and upper management that decided to put me with Steve. Um, I didn't know how that was going to work out. I didn't know much about Steve. I knew him and Jeff were, um, not really clicking at that point in time in their careers. Um, so I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I just wanted to trust uh, their judgment, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Take our next question from George. Yeah, Dale over here. Uh, George Diaz, on that set. No, you touched upon the, the cheerleading uh, thing with, with Steve and how he made you a better driver. Could you expand on, you know, just why specifically you connected with him so well over, over the last few years? Yeah, I think the reason why we got off on such a – 
you know, we, we really took off at the very beginning of our uh, working relationship because – uh, he was always positive, you know, I, I, we'd, I'd just been, you know, I'd beat myself up and, and went through, you know, such a struggle on the racetrack and professionally, I was, um, having a hard time up until that point, um, in the, in the couple years before I worked with Steve and, uh, you know, just things just weren't good at all. And I couldn't get anything. I couldn't get any traction. Couldn't any, couldn't get anything going in the right direction. And I couldn't, I didn't know why, um, why I didn't run well. Um, I didn't, I couldn't see a problem with the team I was with. I couldn't see a problem with the people I was working with. I couldn't see a reason why we were so, you know, unsuccessful. And uh, when I went to work with Steve, he was just always real positive. We're gonna get this, you know, figured out. We're gonna we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it better. And when we didn't run well, um, he didn't ask me why we didn't run well. He said we're gonna figure out why the car didn't perform. We're gonna give you a better car, you know, and and we're gonna improve the body or or, or build a new chassis, and we're gonna do things that can help you uh, drive and, and race like you want to. And then when we would go and physically do those things, build a new car or cut the side off of a car and, and, and take it back to the racetrack, we improved, you know. So it took a lot of pressure off of me as I wasn't the reason for all the, you know, all the failures and all the struggles in the past. And when he would, you know, when we would not run well, he could point to an area where we, we we could improve and we would improve that area and the performance would would pick up so uh it was just um it was a lot of fun <laughs> you know take the pressure off of me and and just be able to go to work and 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 see thing you know see see things change and get better uh that was just uh, that was just a great experience all right we'll try to get to as many questions as we can with dale today we'll take our next one from brant Brand James, ESPN.com. You said you were you were happy for Steve as much as you were with the momentum that you guys were, you know, apparently coming into the season with. It was a tough just to think, oh man, why now? Not really. Um, I, I I had a lesson back when I raced late models. I was working with Gary Hargett, and Gary Hargett and I worked together uh, in '94, '95, and. Uh, he became kind of like a grandfather to me and really, really, really close relationship. I spent a lot of time with him throughout the week and throughout the weekend. And we went, you know, when we went to the racetrack, we went together and, you know, it was just a great relationship. And it some, it, there was a day where I had an opportunity to move my cars from his shop in Union County, uh, up to, up to my shop to be able to work on them as an hour drive. And uh, at that time, I was working at the dealership in Newton, and then I would drive to Gary's at the South Carolina line and work on my car on Wednesday nights, and then I'd drive back down on on Fridays and go racing at Florence and Myrtle Beach on Friday and Saturday, and it was just a lot of driving around. And my father said, all right, I'm, you know, I can, I can, we're going to bring your cars up here, and I'll give you some space to work on them, and you can, you can keep them up here and learn how to build these cars and fix them and and uh, I was just missing out on that experience, being able to work on my own cars and understand them. But I had to take it away from Gary, and I wanted him to come up to the shop and work, and he didn't want to drive an hour up there to work, so he decided he wasn't going to do that, so we had to split up. I was taking the cars and moving the cars up to the, up to Mooresville because that was what was good for me in my career, but I was going to have to do it without Gary. And that was a real, real difficult choice to make. And, uh, I you know, that was just a, a lesson I learned early that things in the sport, uh, no matter how great they are and how much you enjoy them, aren't always going to stay the same. And, uh, you know, this is just another, you know, another situation where that's come true. Okay, our next question, Dustin. Dustin Long, MRN.com. Um, what do you imagine life will be like without Steve as your crew chief? beyond this season and how has your time with him prepared you for the next step yeah i think that steve's uh yeah i've grown a lot as a driver working with steve uh and i feel confident that um 
you know, we can continue to uh, seek success. The reason, you know, I, Steve's, you know, I want to give Steve a lot of credit for how I've changed, uh, and and he does have a lot of influence on the performance of the team. But uh, I I feel confident the team's going to be just fine, uh, no matter who the crew chief is. Uh, that's there's a culture in that shop, and it's a you know it's a it's a culture of of uh, success and winning, and nothing you know anything else is is not acceptable. And uh, I feel like that will continue after Steve's gone. So I'm I'm not really worried about uh you know whether we'll be able to maintain our our consistency and keep getting better um you know I think and and like like I said I think the things that I've learned and and with Steve and what he's taught me and how I've grown as a person and as a driver I'll be able to try to you know maintain that and carry that into the next relationship I have with the next crew chief and uh you know I really feel like that he's helped me become much more much more professional behind the wheel in the in the in in handling my responsibilities and communicating and carrying myself as an adult and and as a professional so um you know that was a bit of a problem for me when I was in you know younger I you know kind of lose it behind the wheel every once in a while and argue and fight and uh we definitely have have moved quite a ways away from that and uh i'm i'm uh, you know there's part of me that's kind of ready to accept the challenge and and you know see how the change affects the team and 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 how you know it's great that we've got a, a year to to figure it out and find out who can can come in there and 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 uh and take his take his place and um you know, I'm, I'm, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be easy. It's going to, it's, it, you know, it, the easiest thing would, would be for us not have to make any changes, but that's not what, <laughs> that's not the way life is. So, uh, you know, we'll face it head on and, um, but yeah, I think I've learned a lot and it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge and a good challenge one I'm ready to accept to try to, try to create a new relationship with a new crew chief. And, um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, it's nothing to worry about. I suppose, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, again, we're not going to be able to get to all the questions. We'll take the final two, Holly and Rick. Go ahead, Holly. Thank you. Holly Kane, uh, NASCAR.com. Dale, Steve kind of mentioned that this year is going to feel a little bit like this is my last chance to win the Daytona 500 yeah. with him and, and different things like that. If you were to be completely honest, do you feel like maybe it's – I don't know if there's going to be a different approach, if that's the right word, but could you talk about how this season is going to be, knowing this is kind of the last? Yeah, yeah, we talked about that, and and uh, you know, your first reaction is to get really disappointed and go, man, you know, uh, this is the last year, and uh, you know, trudge through it, you know, with with and and be sad, but. Uh, after you think about it for a while, you, th you, you know, it, it could have easily been a situation where they, they, you know, he was, he was, he, he, he took a, took a job in broadcasting this year, you know, and we left Homestead not knowing whether we would even work together again. So fortunately, uh, we get to work together one more year and, you know, our friendship and, and our, I think how we enjoy working together, um, is excites us that we have that opportunity and enthuse uh, we're enthused that we have the opportunity to, to go through this process for one more season and uh that it wasn't cut shorter um and he he gets to get it all out of his system and uh you know I get to enjoy working with him for another year and I feel almost lucky in that regard that that I get that opportunity to work with him for one more season so um he's not going to work for another driver or another team he's you know, so it's it's kind of his last hurrah, and um, hopefully he never has to come back to that job again. And uh, you know, his broadcasting career takes him on into the rest of his life. But uh, and I think it will. I think he's going to be fantastic. Okay, we'll take our final question from Rick. Go ahead. Uh, Rick Miller, racing today. Dale, not just you, but any driver, I guess. I would assume your crew chief needs change 
throughout your career? I know you probably you said you sort of need a Gary Hargett figure when you start, but what do you need a driver in the middle of your career and then in the latter part of your career? What's that? Could you get? I don't quite understand the question. I'm saying the, the, your needs as a crew chief, I would assume, sort of evolve throughout yep. your career. And you start out, you sort of need a Gary Hargett grandfather type figure. But I guess the middle part of your career, you need something else, and you need something else later on. Is that sort of the way you see it? I guess. I mean, you know, when uh, when when I got hooked up with Steve, uh, you know, we, we, we became pretty good buddies. And, um, you know, he, he, fit, he fit the – he fit the role, and uh, whatever it was that I needed at the time, he was he was perfect for that role. And uh, I need you know I, I needed to get my confidence back. I needed to get I needed to perform on the racetrack to be able to see that, and uh, to be able to understand my you know my capabilities and and my potential again. And we were able to do that, and he was able to help me you know through that process. And you know I don't you know. Like I said, I don't. I'm not going to make any suggestions on who I think we should get in there to replace Steve. Um, but you know, I'm ready to win races. I think that the team's getting really close to being able to accomplish that. You know, the way we ran last year was was uh, was an improvement on the past season, and the season. You know, 2012 was an improvement on 2011. I want to keep that going because uh, we're getting really close, and. You know, whoever uh, that we bring in and, and, and whatever decisions that, that Rick and, and everybody makes on that regard, uh, I just hope they're, you know, ready to keep moving in that direction. And, uh, you know, we're – I hope that we're able to maintain the integrity of the team because I think all the guys that I got working with me are the best group in the garage. And, uh, you know, we'll just have to cross that bridge when we get to it. But, like, you know, we got a whole other season to go through. It's a long year. A lot of things that, uh, you know, a lot of challenges ahead at all these racetracks we got to run at. And uh, we got a lot of, you know, things unfinished uh, that we, uh, we've we got to accomplish this year. So, you know, a lot of things going on, a lot of things to think about. And, uh, you know, we've got, you know, I'm, I'm confident in Hendrick Motorsports to be able to juggle that, to be able to, uh, for us to be able to focus on this season and try to run well and also be able to, you know, hunt for the guy that's going to replace Steve. I feel confident that uh, HMS can can get it all done. Dale, thank you very much for your thank time you. this morning. Good luck in the 2014.